Here's more wrestling news for October 10th, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with AEW, as prior to last week's Dynamite, Andrade El Idolo started a fight with Sammy Guevara and got sent home for his troubles. Sammy wisely did not fight back, and thus was able to stay at the show he would later main event, and some have suggested that Andrade is deliberately trying to get fired. While speaking on his Experience podcast, Jim Cornette weighed in on the situation, saying that Khan should have fired the former NXT champion long before this backstage brawl took place. Tony Khan should have fired Andrade before, but he hasn't done house cleaning in three years. A couple of the people that really f bad like that f Jimmy Havoc and Joey Janela and whatever, they were allowed to matriculate out. Andrade's actions backstage came after a solid week of El Idolo making it clear in interviews that he wants out of AEW and reportedly plans on making his way back to WWE. That may be easier said than done for Andrade, as despite Triple H being a big fan of his in the past, we doubt that the game wants to deal with the baggage El Idolo is gathering in his efforts to leave AEW. AEW has certainly had its fair share of problems in recent months, but that can't undo the success that the company has seen since launching in 2019. Sure, Tony Khan's leadership has come into question at times, but the young man has made an impressive company, albeit with some serious help. Speaking to DAZN News, Khan discussed AEW's meteoric rise, which would not have been quite so fast without certain names in particular. I think it'd be very challenging. If you looked at many teams and took three players off of them, three of the most featured and productive players on the team, I think those teams would struggle. Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho, and John Moxley are three of the most productive players on our team. A lot of great people contribute to the show, but they are three of the most important for sure. While Moxley and Jericho have been with AEW since the early days, Danielson has been there for just over a year, but has clearly left an impression with Khan. Even with reports of backstage fights becoming worryingly common, Khan knows the three stars he can rely on and is eternally grateful to the trio of world champions. One way AEW has tried to differentiate themselves from WWE is by using a ranking system which has been both good and bad for the company. While the ranking system has added some legitimacy to their company, it has also been ignored in the name of storytelling, as FTR have, in theory, been the rightful contenders for the World Tag Team titles for months. Last month, it was reported that AEW was reconsidering their emphasis on the ranking system, and now Tony Khan has provided an update. Speaking about the system to comicbook.com, Khan said that he is reevaluating how it works and said that there is a possibility that it could be brought back soon. While FTR has been the theoretical number one contenders for months, it's been close to a year since they competed in an AEW World Tag Team Championship match, but perhaps that could all change with whatever new system Tony Khan has planned. In May, Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out of Raw over a creative dispute, and WWE were not exactly gentle in their response. Not only stripping the then-women's tag team champions of their titles, both were suspended and branded unprofessional on live TV. There was a time when it appeared Banks was done with WWE, but that's no longer the case, and her return could be happening very soon, according to what fans heard at Extreme Rules. During Bayley's entrance at last Saturday's premium live event, Michael Cole made reference to Banks, the first time she's been mentioned on WWE programming since the May walkout. It's been reported for some time that Banks is close to returning, and though there's still no confirmed date as to when exactly that'll be, merely being mentioned at Extreme Rules is a huge step in the right direction. For close to 800 days, Roman Reigns has dominated WWE as Universal Champion and has dispatched of megastars including Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and Edge, just to name a few. Roman's reign of dominance on top of WWE is something fans haven't seen in decades, so it's only fitting that he is compared to one of the biggest stars from wrestling's past. Speaking to the Ringer Wrestling Show, Karrion Cross was asked about the Tribal Chief and said how everybody should want to be in the ring with Roman Reigns. I hope nobody minds that I'm comparing him, but to me, he's our modern-day Bruno. Like, what he's doing right now, in my opinion, is historic for our company's history. This art of storytelling, it's an amazing thing, and it's going very well. Cross may get his opportunity soon enough, as it was reported that WWE is considering him as Reigns' opponent for Survivor Series in what would be a first-time collision between the two. 
That all hinges on neither Reigns nor Cross being involved in the upcoming War Games match, but with the strong booking Cross has been receiving since returning to WWE, expect him to take on the undisputed WWE Universal Champion soon enough. Over to Impact now as after a few shaky years, the company is doing pretty well for themselves again as an alternative to the heavy hitters at WWE and AEW. Impact is home to a stacked roster of talented people, but some notable names have now left the company. PW Insider reports that several members of the Honor No More stable have finished with Impact, including Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. Their departures are notable given that they are the current Impact World Tag Team Champions, and there's no word on what will happen with the gold. The two are being joined by Mike's wife Maria Canellis Bennett and Vincent, leaving Honor No More with only a handful of remaining members. There's no word yet on what Impact will do now or what the future holds for the World Tag Team titles, but the promotion will have to think of something after this recent mass exit. The four members of Honor No More have left Impact Wrestling, but they may not be the only ones leaving. Fightful reports that yesterday, October 9th, was Mia Yim's final date on her contract with Impact, meaning she is a free agent if a new deal hasn't been reached. Yim, who previously worked as Jade before leaving to join WWE, returned in spring of this year and has been regularly featured on Impact programming since then. With that said, it was reported when she signed with Impact that her deal was a short-term one, but there is the possibility that a new agreement has been reached. If not, Yim is now a free agent and one we imagine both WWE and AEW will be eager to sign as she'd bring a lot of skill and experience to both companies. It'll be a difficult call for Yim to make, as while she could do much better on WWE's main roster now with Triple H in charge, she'd be able to spend more time with her husband Keith Lee if she joins AEW. Yim's most recent and possibly final match for Impact was at last week's Bound for Glory, where Mickie James got the win over her, and it'll be interesting to see where the former Reckoning goes from here. Now, before returning on last week's SmackDown, Zelina Vega had been out for six months with an injury, but not only is she back, she's the newest member of Legato Del Fantasma. Fans may have been pleased to see the now blonde Vega, but many have questioned why she's with the group, as they already had a female member in Electra Lopez. Clearly, Lopez has not been called up alongside Santos Escobar, Cruz Del Toro, and Joaquin Wilde, which came as news to those backstage. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that many in WWE believed Electra Lopez was going to be called up, but that clearly isn't the case. Something must have happened to change WWE's mind, but there's no word on what has happened since her last appearance on NXT and this week's SmackDown. All we know is that it'll be Vega, not Lopez, who is with Legato Del Fantasma on the main roster in a strange replacement for WWE to make. Back to AEW now as Soraya is with the company and has been medically cleared to compete nearly five years after her last match with WWE. Soraya was never cleared by the company after suffering an injury during a Boxing Day 2017 WWE Live event and the decision to not re-sign her was made as WWE had no plans for her to wrestle again. During her in-ring retirement, Soraya spoke openly about wanting to get cleared and how she was working to get back in the ring, but that wasn't the entire story. During a recent Twitch stream, Soraya admitted that she never had a fully-fledged discussion about her wrestling again, saying that she wasn't mentally ready to make that request. Soraya went on to say that she's still nervous about the prospect of getting back in the ring, but is way smarter now and knows what she can do, and more importantly, what she can't. All signs on AEW programming so far have pointed to Soraya's first match in over five years being against none other than Britt Baker, a match both women have teased in the past, and we can only hope that the decision for Soraya to wrestle again is one that nobody regrets. If you've been following AEW for the past few months, you'll know that there's been plenty of issues behind the scenes. Reports of fights backstage and issues between talent have become worryingly common, but this is something WWE is looking to avoid. In a recent job filing, it was revealed that WWE is seeking an operations manager who will deal with both WWE's creative team and talent. In the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, it's noted that the operation manager will have direct contact with talent and must be able to manage conflicting egos, personalities, and concerns. Though we've heard more about issues within AEW as of late, there will still be conflicting egos in WWE, something the company wants dealt with. 
With Triple H running creative and talent relations, many have been optimistic that the new buzz around WWE is here to stay, and the last thing they need is a handful of wrestlers ruining the momentum with a fight backstage. At Extreme Rules, Bianca Belair retained the Raw Women's Championship against Bayley, defeating the role model in the first singles women's ladder match on the WWE main roster. It was a history-making win for the EST of WWE, and now Belair is closing in on another historic accolade. As pointed out online, Belair is just 12 days away from reaching 200 days as Raw Women's Champion, and if she holds out, she will become the first black woman to hold a championship in WWE for that long. Speaking to BT Sport about the potential milestone, Belair said that it's something she needs to reach and that she wants to keep breaking barriers down. This record hasn't been achieved yet, but it seems incredibly likely at this point in time, in what will be just the latest in a series of monumental achievements for the EST of WWE. Extreme Rules also saw the return of Bray Wyatt in his first appearance for WWE since April of 2021. At WrestleMania 37, Wyatt lost to Randy Orton thanks to interference by Alexa Bliss during her Dark Goddess persona. Now that Wyatt is back, many predict that he's still not thrilled about Bliss's betrayal from WrestleMania 37, but the former women's champion isn't too concerned. On Twitter, Bliss had an ominous message to Bray now that he's back, saying, Hello, old friend. Whether WWE will revisit the storyline between Wyatt and Bliss, only time will tell, but the former women's champion has said in interviews that she misses her darker persona. In recent months, Bliss has been teaming with Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair and Asuka in their feud against Damage Control, but the 5-foot superstar may be trading them in for a much darker partner soon. Bliss was quick to react to Wyatt's return, but Bray himself had some words after he made his monumental comeback to WWE. When a fan shared a video of their excited daughter, complete in fiend mask and with fiend dolls watching Wyatt's return, this got a response from the former Universal Champion. In a tweet of his own, Wyatt said the excitement he can bring fans is why he is back, adding that he has missed all his fans who have supported him. There's still a ton of unanswered questions about Wyatt, such as whether he'll be a heel or face on TV, which brand he'll be on, and who will be his first target. But all we know is that Bray is thrilled to be back and working under the new regime. There were plenty more responses to Wyatt's shocking return last night, including from his wife and former WWE superstar Jojo Offerman. Offerman, who worked as a ring announcer for WWE, was quietly released in 2021, months before her husband's very public release, and shared her two cents over his return. In a tweet, Mrs. Fiend shared her excitement for Bray, saying she's so damn proud of him after his return to the company. Wyatt's return has gone down phenomenally well with fans and those in the industry alike, but it's now up to Bray and WWE to keep this momentum going. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.